Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about photographers who are probably wasting your time when they email, might not even be a photographer at all, and a little bit of safety mixed in with that. How to come out on top, how to shine, how to maybe resolve things if it's just a new person who's really just trying to get their foot in the door and they're not really sure how this all goes down. So I realized in this morning this is what made me want the topic at hand was I got an email from a photographer who was very aggressive about wanting to shoot, uh, just kept saying I want to shoot, I'm a big shot photographer, blah blah blah, and he really had no portfolio on a credible site I've ever seen. The work that he showed me didn't really say much at all, uh, he claimed he wasn't on social media, and not on Model Mayhem or any other, again, site that would say you're somebody. Now, if you're a new photographer, I kind of understand. Usually, though, at that point, when they're ready to hire a model, they'll send you a couple images or they'll talk about the gear they have or you can kind of tell what they're after. But if it's somebody who's just writing you, who wants you to show up, who really won't give you a lot of details and is really just pushy about let they know what they're doing or aggressive in that way, but there's no other place to really find them, um, and they kind of have excuses on why that is, don't buy that. Don't let your ego or your optimism get pulled into a dangerous situation. If you really believe it's going to happen, take an escort. You know, uh, show up and bring someone with you so that you know it's good and maybe this person really just doesn't know the formalities. But I'll tell you, even working with uh, bigger companies, brands, or if it's one-on-one, -on -one, these people know their gear the professionals that are won't waste your time going back and forth will tell you what their plan is you know they're investing in their business they're not just going to bring you in and have no idea what they're doing and even if it's somebody who just enjoys the hobby and kind of seeing what they're going to end up with and they have basic gear and they like just taking pictures they'll tell you that they'll be up front and they'll have a portfolio that they are happy and totally okay with you know, owning what they do to the rest of the world. Maybe they have another name, not a big deal. That's a good thing, you know, protecting themselves. But overall, there should be something else out there or why are they covering it up? So I see that as a huge flag. Number two, if a photographer offers you more money than what you are asking for or what the going rate of a model is, that's a flag. That doesn't mean that you're so great that he is going to give you more money. You haven't showed up at work. He doesn't know that. You could show up and be 40 years older than your picture or 20 pounds heavier or 20 pounds lighter or maybe y'all don't even get along. He might tip you at the end of the shoot. That's really common if you do a great job, but to offer you more money than what you're asking for up front, something's wrong. And especially if they offer to send you a check or something in advance, don't go for it. I stick with the, the basics, PayPal, or the other ways of exchanging Square, things like that. Because not only are you getting your money, or at least half of it, and you confront your trip with that half, but there's also a level of ownership and professionalism and, again, credibility that comes with that. He has to have an address attached to it. Um, he's got your information mildly as a vendor. And it's just so much safer. I mean, you've got a track record. This is someone who's okay with owning what they're doing. If they're not willing to own what they do, that's really bad. Another person to flag or be a little concerned about that I've noticed is one that asks you if you're traveling alone. If they ask you if you're traveling alone, you're not going to win in this situation. I feel like if you sh say you're traveling with, an, with a friend or something, they're going to be weird about it because maybe they have an alternative motive. Sure, maybe they're being sweet, but I don't really think that that's something that they need to know or anything that has to do with the photo shoot. So, and if you say you're traveling alone, you don't want anybody to know that. I'm really, really lucky that when I travel, I usually have someone with me. Um, they don't go to all the shoots with me. They might stay back at the hotel or go do their own business, or I might be staying with somebody who's really within reach of where I'm at. I've been doing this for so long, so that's really fortunate. I think that's where it comes huge into play that you have such a network of friends and that you do keep up with people on social media and they look for you and things like that. 
so that people know where you're at and they're looking for you. But if somebody asks you this question, I wouldn't answer it. And if you need to answer it or they corner you into it, that's kind of weird. But if they do, I mean, you can just tell them, yeah, someone does travel with me. Sometimes they come along, sometimes they don't. And if they do, they just hang out on their computer and work. I mean, usually that's how it is. And if I were you, I would also follow up with that and have somebody probably drop you off or hang out with you when you're doing it just to really follow through for your safety and make sure you've got a totally complete picture of what's going on. Because safety is number one with all of this. I, You know, it's we're all trusting each other and I know that photographers feel the same way too, that they need to be able to trust the models, who's coming in, what's that going to be like, is she going to show up with some, and are they going to take off with my stuff. But again, that's for credibility, having that online presence, having a portfolio, and um, being able to define what your strengths are and what you have to offer as a model is important and that he can look at and that's where him being able to say where he's at as a photographer really plays a big role. Another big thing that I like that I find really important is I always ask for a deposit. Uh, again, I had mentioned this earlier, but I asked for that deposit because again, it really helps out with the running of the trip. But as far as safety goes, it also really helps with having them have ownership of what they're doing. It shows that they're proud of it. It's an investment for them and they're treating it as professionally as as it should be. Um, you might have somebody who's totally freelance who's like, well, I just pay cash, this is just a hobby. But at the end of the day, you want that track record and you want that certainty. And I don't like when people leave a door open for them to either cancel or it just, all in all, that's just a really big one. I find that it's, you know, you're gonna be much more happy and waste less time and let down if you're getting turned down and rejected on this side of the screen rather than being there in person. Because when I've run the numbers on the people who used to cancel when I didn't take a deposit, it really comes down to the same numbers of the people who drop out when we start engaging and I break the news to them that I do have a deposit policy. So instead of me having to truck my way there, set my time aside and turn down other people who are serious and really wanna do this as much as I do, I get the money.